Good afternoon, welcome to the Midday Mall for Thursday the 4th of March. Uh, McShane has us reading Luke chapter 18 today, and I struck not by a specific verse, but by the development of thought that we have as we read through the chapter. Chapter 17 ended with Jesus speaking of the kingdom of God and the coming of the kingdom. And so the question arises, what do we do? Uh, Luke 18 starts with the parable of the persistent widow, Jesus speaking to his disciples um, and giving them this parable to show that they should always pray and not give up. What happens as a result of keeping on praying, people like me, we start becoming a little bit proud. I've prayed for this for three days now. That's do, doing quite well. Um, admittedly, somebody like uh, 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 St. Monica prayed for 30 years for her son, Augustine, to be converted. So three days I've got a way to go. But we start getting proud. And so the next story we have is the, the parable of the, pers of the Pharisee and the tax collector, people that go to pray. One of them prays with uh, a self-confidence and arrogance and the other prays with humility. And so, yes, we keep praying, but we need to be praying with humility not with, and, and not get um, arrogant about what we're doing. And this is then followed by the story of people bringing little children to Jesus and the disciples wanting, wanting to chase them away. And Jesus is saying, no, no, it's these people that the kingdom belongs to, people as, uh, as humble as little children, children that can do nothing for themselves, that are looked after by their parents. That's the kind of humility we're looking for. And this is then contrasted with the next par uh, parable we have, which is the story of the rich man who comes to Jesus and says, what must I do uh, to be saved? And Jesus says to him, you need to go and sell everything. Um, and he goes away say, sad. Who? Because he can't do that. And the disciples say, well, if that's required, who then can be saved? And Jesus says, with people this is impossible, but everything's possible with God. And so the next thing that Luke records is Jesus predicting his death. That he's on his way to Jerusalem where he will die and make the salvation possible because of what he's going to, to be doing. Um, and it ends with the disciples, they didn't understand what Jesus was talking about. And the next story we have is Jesus approaching Jericho and a blind man saying, Jesus, I want to see. And Jesus meeting him and giving him his sight back. And this blind man then following Jesus and everybody praising him. And that then leads into, in chapter 19, the, the story of Zacchaeus the tax collector, somebody that uh, wanted to see Jesus. And when he went to see him, he was then welcomed into the family. So I just struck by this, this flow of thought of uh, the kingdom's coming, so pray. But don't pray arrogantly, pray humbly. Pray humbly like little children. Um, and in contrast to that is this ruler who's rich and trusts in his wealth. And Jesus says, get rid of your wealth, trust in God. And how's this going to work? Because Jesus is on his way to the cross as a sacrifice for sin. And we pray that our eyes would be opened, like the blind man, that we could see this. So, uh, the flow of thought in a chapter of Luke, which I was just struck by. Be blessed.